Escalators have completely transformed our concept of space. They're used by millions of people around the world in places like shopping malls and airports. A typical escalator moving at 145 feet per minute can carry more than 10,000 people an hour, an astonishing number. But how are these devices actually made? The concept of the modern escalator has been around for quite a while, although a functional version wasn't made until 1899, when American inventor Charles Seaberger built one. His creation was installed at the Paris Exhibition of 1900, where it won first prize. Seaberger also coined the term escalator by joining scala, which is Latin for steps, with the word elevator. In 1910, Seaberger sold the original patent rights for his invention to the Otis Elevator Company. Although numerous improvements have been made, Seaberger's basic design remains in use today. An escalator is made up of a lot of components to get everything right in manufacturing. It must be adequately designed first. The design phase is critical in creating an escalator that meets safety standards, building requirements, and user needs. Engineers consider factors such as the intended use, building structure, and traffic flow. The design includes specifications for the escalator truss, steps, handrails, drive systems, and safety features. There isn't a lot of room for error in the production process, so it's essential that all the kinks and quirks are worked out in this phase. The truss is the main support structure of the escalator. Like the chassis of a car, it houses the drive mechanism and provides stability to the entire system. Trusses are typically made of steel and are composed of two side sections joined together with cross braces across the bottom and just below the top. They are fabricated with precision. Advanced manufacturing techniques such as laser cutting and welding are employed to ensure the truss's structural integrity. Next up are the steps. These are the movable platforms that carry passengers. Comb plates located at the top and bottom of the escalator help guide these steps. They also ensure a smooth transition between the stationary floor and the moving surface. Steps are made from aluminum ingots which are first put in a crucible. Before the melted aluminum is placed into the mold that shapes the steps, a release agent is applied to the mold. Additional lubricant is also sprayed. All of this is done to ensure the aluminum is released properly from the die cast machine. This machine receives exactly the right amount of aluminum to make one step from an automated dispenser. Once the cast aluminum is taken out of the machine, a robot carries it to the trimming department. Here, the residual aluminum left over from the casting process is removed by a trim press, a machine used for trimming, cutting, or shaping materials such as metal and other substances. The excess material won't be wasted though, it goes back to the crucible to be recycled. After the general trimming has been taken care of, the step is sent to the finishing department where finishing robots file off the sharp edges. Along with the rest of the surface, the robot also files in between the teeth that go across the step. These teeth are essential since they help with alignment and can also improve balance and stability for people riding. Finally, the step is passed over a belt sander, making it smooth to the touch. Moving handrails that run parallel to the steps are crucial for providing support and safety for passengers. These handrails are driven by the escalator's motor and are made of durable materials, such as rubber or polyurethane. Now that the steps and handrails are taken care of, we get to the heart of the operation, the escalator's drive system. The drive system consists of an electric motor, a gearbox, and a chain drive. The motor powers the system, and the gearbox ensures the correct speed and torque for smooth operation. Each of these components is manufactured separately and quality control checks are conducted to ensure the components meet specifications. The control system is the brain of the escalator. It manages the speed, direction, and overall operation. It receives input from various sensors and user interfaces, ensuring the escalator operates efficiently and safely. Escalators are equipped with numerous safety features, including emergency stop buttons, sensors to detect obstructions, and automatic braking systems. The balustrade is the enclosure that runs along the sides of the escalator, containing the steps and handrails. It provides a safety barrier and often serves as a decorative element. The choice of materials is crucial in ensuring the durability, strength, and safety of the escalator. High-quality steel, aluminum, and other durable materials are used for the truss, steps, handrails, and other critical components. Once individual components are manufactured and tested, they are assembled into a complete escalator system. First, side frames are attached to the drive system to form what is called the transition assembly. This assembly not only allows the handrails but also the steps to loop back at both ends of the escalator. The assembly is then lowered onto the truss, the hollow steel structure manufactured beforehand. 
Then comes the comb plates, the last part of an escalator a person treads on before stepping on and off the moving steps. Finally, the steps themselves are installed. A worker rolls out a chain of rollers called a step chain. The pins of the chain are greased and the steps are placed in position. The axles on the steps are then connected to the pins in the step chain. They are then locked together using a spring flip. The steps are then fed into the assembled truss unit where a turnaround track is installed. This allows the steps to loop continuously from one end of the escalator to another. The control system, comprising electronic components and software, is integrated into the escalator's structure. This involves connecting sensors, interfaces, and safety mechanisms to the control unit. The balustrade is installed along the sides of the escalator, enclosing the steps and handrails. This not only contributes to safety, but also enhances the aesthetics of the escalator. Special attention is given to safety features. Emergency stop functions, sensors, and braking systems are tested under various conditions to simulate real-world scenarios. Before installation, the site undergoes preparation to accommodate the escalator. This includes creating the pit for the lower landing, ensuring proper electrical connections, and making structural adjustments as needed. Specialized equipment is used to lift the assembled escalator into the building. It is carefully positioned in the prepared shaft, and precise alignment is crucial for proper functionality. Electrical connections are made, and the escalator is calibrated to the specific requirements of the building. This involves adjusting speed, leveling, and synchronization between the steps and handrails. Escalators require regular maintenance to ensure optimal performance and safety. Inspections involve checking for wear and tear, lubricating moving parts, and testing safety features. In the event of malfunctions or breakdowns, prompt repairs are essential to minimize downtime and maintain the escalator's reliability. When a user approaches the escalator, motion sensors detect the presence. The control system receives the signal and activates the drive system. The motor powers the chain drive, causing the steps to move in a continuous loop. Simultaneously, the handrails move at the same speed, providing support to passengers. The control system regulates the speed and direction of the escalator based on user demand and traffic conditions. Sensors continuously monitor the escalator's performance and adjust speed as needed. Various safety features, including emergency stop buttons, sensors, and braking systems, are active throughout the operation. If an obstruction is detected or an emergency stop is initiated, the escalator comes to a halt. The escalator automatically slows down as it approaches the upper or lower landing. Upon reaching the landing, the escalator smoothly decelerates, allowing passengers to step off. Escalators are designed for automatic operation, minimizing the need for constant manual intervention. The control system ensures efficient and safe operation under varying conditions. Although there's a lot of complexity involved in the process of making an escalator, I'd say the end result is worth it, wouldn't you?